It's okay. Let's start over here. Hi, Chaim Malevsky here from Chabad Family Programs of the West Side with a powerful thought from the Lubavitcher Rebbe on this week's Parsha. This is Balak. It's Chukas Balak. It's a double portion. But our talk is regarding a fascinating situation in which there's a... When Moshe Rabbeinu passed away, when our the greatest prophet of all times. Moshe passed away. It says, Lo kam navi, od be Israel ke Moshe. But there has never risen another prophet in Israel like Moshe. In simple words, Moshe was the greatest prophet of all time. The Midrash takes this quote of the Torah and explains why does it say that there was no prophet ever as great as Moshe among Israel, in Israel. And it says a, a startling thought. And it says that only in Israel, in the Jewish people, there was no prophet. But in the other nations of the world, there was a prophet as great in prophecy as Moshe. And who was that? the subject of this week's Torah portion. His name is Bilam. He's a non-Jewish prophet and the Torah describes his prophecy in great length and detail. And the beginning of our daily morning prayers of the Jewish people all around the world start with the words that Bilam quoted and prophesied about the Jewish people. Ma tovu o'alecha Yaakov Mishkanot ha'cha Yisrael Ma tovu o'alecha Yaakov Mishkanot ha'cha Yisrael These words, the beginning of the prayer book for every Siddur in the world they're from Bilam from a non-Jewish prophet. So, first we see that there was a prophet as great as Moshe in, in this matter of prophecy. Doesn't mean he was great as Moshe in other things. In a certain degree of prophecy, he was as great as Moshe. And the Torah talks about him, and from there, from the Torah's discussion about Bilam, we learn laws of prophecy, various laws, some of which are about how the prophet is supposed to relay the message that he gets from God, he or she, they were male and female prophets. And other laws also, or one specific law that the Rebbe talks about in this talk was about the prohibition from the prophet to, it's called, to be kovesh nivoso, which means to withhold his prophecy. Meaning, in simple words, if a prophet received a message from above, the prophet must relay it and cannot hold it quiet, silent, and keep it private. It's called kovesh nivuoso. Big, big no-no for a prophet to withhold the prophecy from the people. Rebbe moves on and talks about prophecy today. It says in the Talmud that ever since the Beit HaMikdash, the Holy Temple was destroyed, there's no more prophecy. The prophecy left the world. But the Talmud also says that prophecy remained in a few certain instances, and one of them is the children that prophecy remains in children, which means simply that when children speak, sometimes, not always, but sometimes, it's prophecy. In Hebrew, the word prophecy is nevuah. It's nevuah. And the Rebbe explains what's going on here with these two passages and says that the regular prophecy 
like the great prophets of old, like Shmuel, Hanavi, etc., Zechariah, Yermio, when they spoke, it was God speaking through their throat a hundred percent. That kind of prophecy has already left our world, and the other, a small form of prophecy, which is called Nevu'ah Kitana, a small form of prophecy, remains in children. But here's the catch. The Rebbe says that every person has a child within. You and I, we all have a child within, which means that sometimes the prophecy comes to us too. Now, how so? How do you know whether something that comes to you is prophecy or not? So the Rebbe explained that one of the main differences between ideas that, or conclusions that come to an adult or a child, one of the main differences is how they get there. An adult thinks of an idea, explores it, goes through, analyzes it, finds proofs, disputes it, and comes to a conclusion, a logical conclusion, that here's a practical idea, here's a relevant idea, here's a true idea. Child, none of that. Idea pops into his head or her head and boom, he's gone. He's off with the idea. So the Rebbe says that sometimes in our lives, we also have these times, these ideas that pop into our heads, that were completely unexpected and unplanned. And so sometimes a person, when he's studying Torah or not, wakes up in the morning and a verse from the Torah pops into his head. That's prophecy, says the Rebbe. Something that you completely didn't plan for is prophecy. But not only in Torah study, also in matters in your own life, and even also when a, a, an idea pops into your head about helping another person who needs help, that if it's unplanned and unexpected, that's a form of prophecy. The Rebbe explains this more. It's a common phrase that everybody knows is mazel tov. Everyone says mazel tov, mazel tov. What is mazel? What is mazel tov? So, long story short, as what is important for this uh, talk, mazel is a level of a soul that it hovers above us, above our consciousness. And it's not in the consciousness, but it's the root of our souls. So when we say mazel tov, we're wishing ourselves and others that the mazel, the root level of the soul, the word mazel means flow, should flow down into the soul the way it's in this body and have a positive effect on it from on high. The Baal Shem Tov says that there's a statement in the Talmud that says that there are a few voices that are constantly, every day, they come out from heaven. And that's called a voice of coming from heaven. It's called a bat kol. Bat kol or bas kol if you're Ashkenazic. A voice from heaven. And there's a few of them that come out. One of them is shuvu banim shovavim. Return my children, the wild ones. That's us. God is telling us, return. Another one is Eilev El Banosh El Don't ignore or disgrace the Torah. And the Baal Shem Tov says, asks, why are these heavenly voices coming out from heaven daily if no one hears them? The Torah tells us about them, but if I don't hear them and you don't hear them, what's its value? And he explains that true, we don't consciously hear them, but 
our mazal hears them. The level of our neshama that hovers above us in a spiritual realm hears these voices from God. And this affects our neshama, the part of our neshama, our soul, that's in our body. And it helps us, gives us uh, an, an energy, it gives us a, an injection of spirituality, an injection of spirit towards to follow God's instructions, to return to Him. So, the Rebbe brings us down to practical application. Hi, Steve. That's great. Hi, everybody. I can't see, I can't really see the screen because it's really small and distant. But, um, will, thank you for coming. The Rebbe talks about this and says, now in our generation, says, every once in a while, a person has an unexpected, unplanned, unwarranted, unearned, maybe even undeserved thought. It's called a hirhur teshuva, a thought, a flash of teshuva, of return, of a desire to return to God, to return, get closer to God, to distance ourselves from what he doesn't want, and to dive into the Torah. Those are little flashes of prophecy, says the Rebbe. And because they're little flashes of prophecy, we have to treat them as such. And some of the rules of prophecy that we spoke about earlier were that you can't ignore them. You can't contain and withhold the prophecy from the world. You have to share it with the world. And the Rebbe explains that in prophecy, there's two parts. And it applies to our obligation also to the prophetic messages that we get whenever we get them. And that is, one part is that God has given you a specific task that you need for your soul, just part of your specific service to God. And therefore you get a flash of a prophetic message, whether it's to improve yourself or to help another human being. Sometimes our flashes are, oh, I just feel bad for that person. I want to help him or her. And that says the Rebbe, if it's unexpected, un not premeditated, it's a prophetic flash. And also, says the Rebbe, a prophet has an obligation, a global obligation, because prophecy, the second level, the concept of prophecy, is that it's not just for you. It's not just for your private service to God. It's part of the global need. It's part of the global service that God wants for the world. It's part of Avodah Hashem. This, this is like, it's like part of building the Beit HaMikdash. Rabbi equated it. It's something that the whole world needs. It needs your prophecy. And don't hold it. Don't withhold it from the world. Share it which means absorb it and do something about it. doesn't mean that you have to tell all your prophecies to everyone because they'll think you're crazy. But it does mean that you have to take it to heart and not ignore them. And finally, Rebbe concluded this part of the talk by saying that God provides every generation with a person, a nasi, a leader, who has access to a form of prophecy in which he is very much aligned with what God wants for the generation and shares it with the generation. We call that a Rebbe. The Rebbe in his talk officially was talking about the previous Rebbe, his Rebbe. We see our Rebbe as that leader who's aligned with what God wants for our generation. And we follow and it's in our best interest to follow his teachings and guidance. That's the story for today. God bless you. You are a prophet. And so am I. The child within. All the best. <laughs>